Bonjour, and welcome to a new episode of 7 Minutes of Bond Locations. I'm Martin Mulder, and today I will show you the Bond locations in and around the City of Light, the City of Love, Paris. Paris is probably one of the most popular cities in the world. Conveniently located on the banks of the River Seine, the city played an important part in the Roman Empire when it was known as Lutetia. Since the 17th century, it's been one of Europe's major centers of finance, diplomacy, commerce, fashion, science and arts. Today, its museums and architectural landmarks attract over 20 million foreign visitors every year, the majority coming from the United States. 1.2 million visitors come from the UK, and one of them was 007. Ian Fleming described one of these visits in his short story From a View to a Kill. According to Fleming, Bond doesn't like post-war Paris very much, and this is surely a reflection of the writer's own feelings. Uh, although the city was spared by both the Allies and the Nazis, the Second World War did change the city uh, from a bright, elegant art center to a somewhat faded transportation hub. Anyone interested in Fleming's thoughts on this should pick up a copy of his uh, For Your Eyes Only short story bundle. The Bond films also use the city and the surrounding chateaus quite a few times, Thunderball being the first. The pre-title sequence was filmed at the Chateau d'Annette, located in Dreux, some 80 kilometers west of Paris. It's one of the many French castles or chateaux built for kings and other aristocracy that all wanted to be close to Paris. Chateau d'Annette was originally built for Diane de Poitiers, mistress of Henry II of France. After the French Revolution, the castle was partially demolished, which is the reason why the chapel is now standing quite solitary, opposite what's left of the house. In the chapel, 007 and his French aide witnessed the burial ceremony of Colonel Jacques Bouvard. Inside the house, his widow turns out to be the deceased colonel himself, and Bond kills him. He escapes from the roof with the jetpack, and lands safely near his DB5, which is parked at the Place du Château. The Chateau d'Annet scenes were all filmed in uh, February 1965, while Connery and the cars were in Paris anyway for the premiere of Goldfinger. Hey, no parking here! One other scene filmed in the city was shot at the Avenue des Lots. It would then take until 1979 uh, for Bond to return to Paris, as many scenes from Moonraker were filmed in and around the French capital. The fifth floor of the futuristic Centre Pompidou was the place where Bond first met Dr. Holly Goodhead. Other Moonraker locations include the Château de Guermantes as the interior of Drax's residence. and the limestone quarries and caves at Livry Gargan that were used as Drax's underground facility. The most important location, however, is the Château Vaux-le-Vicomte, southeast of Paris, near the town of Melun. The estate of Vaux-le-Vicomte was purchased in 1641 by Nicolas Fouquet, an ambitious 26-year-old member of parliament of Paris. When Fouquet became King Louis XIV, Superintendent of Finances, in 1656, he ordered his estate and garden to be renovated and enlarged. To secure the necessary grounds for the elaborate plans, Fouquet purchased and demolished three villages. The displaced villagers were then employed in the upkeep and the maintenance of the gardens. It was said to have employed 18,000 workers. When Louis XIV wondered how this was all financed. Fouquet was arrested and imprisoned for life. His wife later recovered the property and retired there. After Fouquet's death, uh, the property was sold, and presumably to Sir Hugo Drax, because he is the one that can be seen living there in Moonraker.
At the Hercules statue on the opposite side of the garden, Bond was invited by Drax to shoot pheasants. And it's also here in the woods where Corinne was killed by the dogs. Six years later, Bond was already back. The View to the Kill was the last time 007 would visit Paris on screen. And this time uh, we see a bit more of the city itself. Even though his lunch with detective Arquille Aubergine was in fact filmed in the studio, there actually is a very posh restaurant inside the Eiffel Tower. It's the Jules Verne and it offers great views of Paris, especially at night. On the northwest side of the Eiffel Tower, Bond stole the Renault taxi. Because of the new security regulations in this area, uh, it looks rather different today than he did in the 80s. When you walk the embankment and follow the River Seine in northeastern direction, you are following the taxi's trail until you eventually end up at the Alexander III Bridge. Here, Mayday landed on the river boat, and later Bond as well, sort of. Fifteen kilometers north of Paris, near Charles de Gaulle Airport, the impressive Chateau de Chantilly majestically looms up out of the forest. The original castle was largely destroyed in the wake of the French Revolution, but it was rebuilt in the late 19th century. It's not only the place where sweet whipped cream was invented, it was also the home of Max Zorin in A View to a Kill. And surprisingly, it has an official sister castle, which is another Bond location. Himeji Castle in Japan. Even though Chantilly has its own racetrack next to the stables, this is not the racetrack used in the film. That one can be found further on in the forest. They did however use the grandstand at Chantilly's racetrack for the scene in which the KGB agents visit Sorin. In the small town of Chantilly, just behind the castle, you can find the gas station with the car wash, where Mayday killed Tibbet. So basically, all the castles from the different Bond films are within an 80 km radius from Paris. You do need a car to get there, and you should also realize that it's impossible to visit all three uh, castles in one day. Uh, just take your time and enjoy the marvelous uh, architecture, uh, historical context and the priceless artworks that you will see during your visits. Well, that concludes our visit to Paris. Um, I'll stay here and I'll enjoy my lunch and, and, and maybe some entertainment. Hey! What? Qu'est-ce qu'il y a, monsieur? I, uh, 
hope to see you next time. Check out on the tracks of 007.com and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram.